it's no secret that the best person for the position doesn't always get the job. We've all scratched our heads from time to time, wondering why that clown got the job. The answer is quite simple. It goes to the person who sells themselves the best. But how do they do that? I'm going to share some secrets those great sellers use to position themselves as the best candidate so you can do the same thing. The only difference being you will actually be the best person for the job. And by the way, this works both for jobs with a new company as well as promotional opportunities in your current position. It works for accounting, finance, accounts payable, payments, and a slew of other positions. We'll discuss the five second rule, the 10 minute rule, the early bird bill, the early bird rule, and the uphill battle rule to ensure you are armed and ready for battle when you go on that all important interview. Make sure you stick around until the end when we share the one place where many fall down during the interview and we'll show you how to avoid that debacle. Interview success tactic number one. Remember the five second rule when it comes to your resume. On average, recruiters will spend five seconds evaluating your resume before deciding whether to read further on or move on. Once they've moved on, the damage is done. You are out of the running for that job. So make sure your resume is perfect, formatted nicely, easy to read, which means a decent size font and font size and no typos. First impressions are critical. If you haven't looked at your resume in a while, take another look at it. Same goes with your LinkedIn profile, which is where the recruiter is likely to go next. I want to say something about typos. You never see them in your own work. I know, sadly, I can speak from personal experience. It's not enough to have someone proof your resume when you complete it. You need to do this every single time you update it, no matter how small the update. Because if you don't, one of those small nasty typos will sneak in. Interview success tactic number two. Remember the 10 minute rule when it comes to your interview. This is true whether you're doing a live interview or doing an interview over Zoom. Most interviewers will have made their decision on whether you're a potential candidate for the position or not within the first 10 minutes. Often the first interview, a screening call really, will be done over Zoom. Take this just as seriously as you would a live interview with one additional caveat. You don't want to unintentionally signal that you are anything but completely serious about work. This is all, by the way, subconscious. So take a close look at what the interviewer will, will see if the call is on Zoom. Don't have any unmade bed or dirty dishes showing up in the background. Set up your computer with an appropriate background. This might even be in a hall, ideally in an office-like setting. Then call a friend or your mother and ask them how everything looks. My son did this once a few years ago, and he and I maneuvered the screen around until you couldn't see his kitchen in the background. If it is a live interview, then take similar care with your appearance. It is critical that you come across as lively, intelligent, interested, and knowledgeable during those first 10 minutes when they are forming their opinion of you. Do this part right, and you won't have to worry about the uphill battle rule that we're gonna discuss a little later on. Clearly, first impressions are important. You never get a second chance to make a good first impression. But that's not the only way these successful self-promoters sell themselves. As you'll see, they've got a few other tricks up their sleeve. Before we get to the early bird rule, and it's not what you're thinking, I'd like to request that if you're getting any value out of this, you hit the like or the thumbs up button to let both this channel and me know uh, so that the information may be shared with many more people and I should make more like it. And also a big thank you from me to all of you who did that for me. Interview success tactic number three, remember the early bird rule. While most interview strategies include asking some strong questions at the end, there's something to be said for asking those questions at the appropriate time much earlier in the interview. So in addition to answering their questions, make sure you don't drone on too long about anything, but also ask a few very thoughtful questions of your own at the appropriate time. 
There are several reasons for asking these questions. Number one, you want the information. Number two, you will seem interested and invested in the potential job. And number three, their answers will help you craft your responses to their questions. So here are a few questions that will help you do that. One, what is your vision for the role? Two, what are the department's greatest weaknesses? Three, what is your biggest concern that keeps you up at night? By identifying how they are thinking and what their needs are early in the game, you can craft your answers so they help paint you as the ideal candidate. For example, if they say we have too many duplicate payments, you can craft your answer to include how you have successfully reduced the number in your existing position. If the interviewer reveals that they are concerned about AI, sprinkle your responses throughout the rest of the interview about how you have used AI or instances where you found AI making critical mistakes, as it sometimes does. Interview success tactic number four. Remember the avoid the uphill battle rule. Traditional interviewing advice includes the advice to have some questions to ask at the end when they say, do you have any questions? And you definitely should be prepared for, with questions for that eventuality. But don't sit there like a bump on the log until they get to that point. Ask the ones that will give you insight into the company much earlier, as we've, we've discussed. Don't wait until the end thinking your questions will undo any damage your lackluster performance uh, from earlier in the interview has done. The damage has been done and it will be nothing short of a miracle if you are able to change someone's opinion at this point. But have some questions prepared in case, in case you don't have any based on, the, on what was being said during the interview. If you don't, they're apt to think you're either not interested or not very bright. And neither of those things is good for your prospects of landing a job. Interview success tactic number five. This can make a big difference in the salary they eventually offer you, tens of thousands of dollars in your pocket or not. At some point, the interviewer is going to ask you what your salary requirements or salary expectations are. Everyone hates this question, but it's a fact of life. You need to be ready for it. The salary expectations question, by the way, is very different than if they ask you their, your current salary, which hopefully they won't because it taints the interview, is illegal in some states, and really should not be a factor in determining what they are going to pay you. When the interviewer asks you what your salary requirements are, be ready with a good answer. Your response to this question, for obvious reasons, is so important that we did a separate talk on it, which you can watch right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.